Welcome back to the Drum Rundown. We're here at Marathon Music Works in Nashville, Tennessee, and I'm sitting here with Ben Gordon of Parkway Drive. What's going on, man? Hey, man. How you doing? Good. Awesome to talk to you, man. I've been wanting to ask you because you are in an elite group of drummers <laughs> that have played upside down in a cage <laughs> with fire, yeah. you know, all around you. Can you talk to me a little bit about what it's like to play upside down? Yeah, it's definitely a challenge, <laughs> especially because the first time we did it in 2017, there was no way I could practice for it because the rig was getting built in Europe. I was in Australia preparing for the tour and I had to buy some moon boots, they're called, that I could hang on my chin up bar at home and like just get used to having the blood rushing to my head, but I couldn't actually play until we got there three days before the, the tour started. And then I was like, I wrote this like drum solo that took me like a month to write. And then when I got, was upside down, I couldn't play it because it was obviously so much more challenging. So I had to like dumb down the solo I wrote. And then, um, yeah, the trickiest part is like when you're directly upside down, it's not that, I mean, it's difficult, but the, the weirdest part is when you're sideways, like, because your whole orientation is just confused. Like you're so used to how, gr the way gravity works and all of a sudden like, you're sideways and the seat, because it's like a race car chair yeah. where I'm strapped back and down. With drums, you move your torso a lot. So I'm, I'm strapped like this and my legs are strapped down. So it's like I'm fighting against that and then fighting against the gravity upside down. And then you sideways, I've got to like lift my torso kind of up and then the symbols are too far away. There's heaps of weird stuff going on. But I've done it for a while now and I've become pretty used to it and actually really enjoy it. Yeah. But um, yeah, obviously, we don't have it on this tour because we've never used it in America uh, because they need to be quite big rooms to fit the rig in um, and we're a lot bigger in Europe, but we're trying to bring it to America. There's plans Dude, for the next so tour. Dude, that's so awesome. I can't wait. Yeah. I can't wait to see it. Yeah, I was going to say there's no way you could probably practice that because uh, mm. like how do you like set it up so you have like three days to get ready. What I found interesting was that you weren't just playing like a solo and kind of like whatever where you were kind of on your own. You played a song so you like mm. still had responsibility to hit parts and keep the song going what was that like yeah man it's it's actually crazy like i said like there's been a few moments where i've been playing upside down the pyro's going off there's eighty thousand people out the front i'm upside down seeing the crowd up on like opposite way up and i've just had these moments going how the <laughs> hell did this happen like this is this is a weird view but that not many people in the world has ever seen, like, yeah, so it's like, it's, you really got to keep your calm and keep yeah. your nerve. And there was testing moments, like the first time we did it, I, oh yeah, had moments where it was like, it was too much because I'd never done a drum solo before my whole career. Obviously drums are super important in the live environment, but like, I'd never been right in the limelight that much. And now, so it was the first time we had this rig, so we said, you should do a drum solo for the first time, but you're gonna do it upside down, on fire. So it was like the first time like I had a solo moment, it was like this, like from zero to 100, and it was, yeah, full on, but that was like in 2017, and I had some ups and downs, but now, I, like I said, I've, I've gotten used to yeah. it, and just uh, have, have some fun with it. That's really the, the big thing that, the mentality we have in our band in general is it's, we're making, we're playing music. It's, yeah. not, it's not that serious. It's only rock and roll, yeah, man. Yeah, exactly. yeah. Well, I was going to say there are a few that have played upside down, but what I found interesting about yours is that it's completely 360. Like mm. some dudes tilt and kind of go sideways, but I mean, you're like a complete circle. So that was really impressive. And yeah. you pulled it off and it's uh, highly effective. Very cool. Thanks, man. Yeah, it's yeah. not, the design's different to anything we've seen. It's like the Slipknot one went forward and down and spun that way. Then Motley Crue, he's done all sorts of stuff. Roller coasters but, and everything. Yeah, yeah, the idea actually came from when we did a music video for a song called Crushed, and we had this room made up because the idea was to make gravity um, seem twisted. So the room spun, and the, but the camera stayed, so it looked like all of a sudden gravity is getting sucked different directions. So we made this room, and then we were in it going, Let's, this would be really cool to use live. And then we just adapted that for live. So That's so awesome. Yeah, it just, but it's funny thing is, you know, the internet people these days, we did it, there's probably like, like you said, three other drummers in the world who've ever done it. And 80% of the comments when we first did it was like, copying Slipknot, copying Motley Crue. <laughs> Come on, <We're> like, man. <laughs> yeah. But anyway. Whatever. Awesome. Well, we can't wait for you to bring it to America and it, it will be exciting for the fans. But let's get into what you're playing here today. What do we got? So yeah, I'm very happily endorsed by Pearl. They look after me everywhere I go. I've got a, a black 
reference kit here, which is my the kit I have at home and use every, all around the world. Um, the toms are 8, 10, 12, 14, 16. Um, all the hardware is Pearl. I use the Demon Drive double kick pedals, which are like, I don't go anywhere without them. Even to the supermarket, I'll bring them. <laughs> <laughs> and then cymbals, I'm also endorsed by Zildjian for the last 17 years. Um, they're an amazing company to be, to be a part of. Um, so I've got 10 inch A Custom Splash, 14 inch A Custom Master Sound Hats, 19 inch A Custom Crush, 19 inch Projection Crush, which is probably my favorite one. <laughs> Um, 21 inch Mega Bell Ride and 18 inch A Custom China. Cool. It's a few cymbals I mix up, the China and a few splashes I mix up, but the rest of them are solid. Yeah. So, Sounds so yeah, great. That, that's what I've got. And it's kind of, yeah, the rig I use all around the world in Europe and America and wherever we go. Yeah. And what heads are we using here on the Toms? Well, yeah, I'm also happily endorsed by Remo. They're an amazing company. They look after me as well. So, I've got uh, clear pinstripes on the toms. I've got controlled sound coated um, on the snare. I mix that up sometimes as well, but yeah. this one's working for me at the moment. What do you uh, use in other situations? What's your other go-to head? Uh, I was using the um, the power strokes, and it just kind of depends in the studio. There's different for different like sounds. The um, control control sound X. Mm -hmm. They were they were really good. Like they work and. I don't know, it depends. A lot of times, a few different drum techs and they just have suggestions and I roll with it. If it sounds good, then I'm happy to use it. I'm not really like really strict on it has to be this, it has to be that, it just has to sound good. Right. So I'm happy to experiment, but at the moment we're using the control sound. Cool. Mm. And uh, in terms of your monitor mix, how is uh, your monitor set up? Um, yeah, we've got a full monitor rig that's, we've got a sound guy that's been, monitor guy that's with us everywhere we go. Antho sitting just there. <laughs> Thank you for um, your work. Yeah, I mean, the obviously most important thing being the drummer is hearing the tracks, the click. Okay. Because that's the foundation of everything. And then solid, healthy mix of myself, and then just guitars panned, and then vocals pretty low, bass medium. But as long as I can hear myself, I'm sweet. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Sounds good. Yeah. Cool. Literally. Yeah. <laughs> Sounds great. <laughs> So you mentioned that you're using the uh, Demon Drives for your double kick. Can you talk to me about what led you to choose those? Yeah, so I used to use the Eliminator pedals for years, and they were the best pedals in the game. And then Pearl upped it, which I didn't think they could, to be honest, to the Demon Drive pedals. And they just are smoother. They, they have this feature where you can make them longboard or shortboard. They come shortboard, but I have them longboard, so you can, when you're going fast, you can pull your feet down further and it's just the way it works, it's just smoother. Um, I mean, I, one thing about my drumming, I started when I was 11, so like 26 years ago, but I started basically with a double kick pedal. A lot of drummers obviously start with a single pedal and then they go back and learn with a double kick, so it doesn't come second nature to them, but for me, it does. Like, I actually had to go back later on in my drumming career and learn how to count because it's opposite like counting is on the one with the hi-hat right. when you're playing and traditionally your left foot on the kick pedals on the end because it's the slave foot um, so yeah I've been using double kicks double kick pedals since I was a kid and I've been using Pearl basically the whole time I used some cheap ones at the start but the eliminators they're just I mean sorry the demon drives are as good as it gets they're just super super well built and smooth and they're just reliable every night. Yeah, it's great. And uh, in terms of sticks, what do you got? You sticks, got signatures. Yeah, I got signature sticks, the Zildjian Ben Gordon. They're basically, the size is just um, rock. Okay. Is, that's a size. I use heavy sticks, like even these. Um, I, yeah, I, yeah, those I, are monsters. I, the, other, the other day, I'd ran out of sticks and I had to use a pair of 2Bs for a show and 2Bs felt like matchsticks to me. <laughs> so, like, I'm just used to heavy heavy sticks. For yeah. me, personally, when you play heavy rock, heavy metal, it's so important that the drums sound loud and powerful and in order to do that, you obviously need a powerful drummer but you need powerful sticks. Yeah. <laughs> because if you're hitting like really, you know, 
this heavy music with like five A's, for example, or five B's, it just doesn't, the drums don't sound the same. So to really get the most out of the drums, you need heavy sticks. So yeah, that's why I use. And you guys ones. are one of the heaviest bands. I mean, you've kind of been in that heavy rock sound and kind of redefined heavy rock from your part of the country and your part of the world. So we appreciate you coming to America and bringing the heavy. We're so glad to see you guys back on the road. Thanks, man. And I cannot wait to see the uh, 360 kit on the next tour. So you guys go and see Parkway drive if you can it's a pleasure to have them here this has been the drum rundown i'm here with ben gordon of parkway drive we will see you on the next one thanks guys